Hi, this is Brian Kim, and I'd like to introduce the Kim Capsular Fornix Hydro Dissection Cannula for the Capsular Fornix Hydro Dissection Technique. If you're like me, you've used various cannulas for hydro dissection, and sometimes it would result in hydro dissection failure or inadvertent hydro delineation. So I designed this cannula with the help of Katina, and this cannula is used for the Capsular Fornix Hydro Dissection. And so this is a new technique uh, that I came up with. This is a cannula. You can see that it has a blunt, flat, smooth, um, and rounded tip. And it is a right-angled, long tip, longer than most uh, right-angled hydrodissection cannulas. And uh, it is designed this way to be placed in the capsular fornix deeply. And so as you can see here, the cannula is going in. This is in slow motion went through the incision and it's going to go under the anterior capsular opening and you can see the rounded tip and it's smooth and it's safe for fornix placement i'm going to slide the cannula out to the capsular fornix and when you get to the fornix you'll feel a little nudge the eye moves and when you when it moves you see that oh now i pull back so when you get to the end you can feel a little resistance and then you pull back a little bit and then you rotate the tip downward you can see the barrel slowly rotating downward and you want that tip facing the optic nerve and so it's going to face posteriorly and as soon as it's facing 90 degrees down you gently push the plunger and you can see this very easy flowing hydrodissection wave this happens with a very high reproducibly reproducibility and consistency without a lot of manipulation or difficulty and so that was and now as I push, you can see the hydrodissection wave occurred. And as the uh, capsule is separated from the lens, the remainder of the BSS goes into the anterior chamber and causes the viscoelastic to prolapse from the anterior chamber. And so that's a sign of a successful hydrodissection. First a fluid wave and then prolapse the viscoelastic. And then you uh, decompress the bag with the cannula to make sure that there is not too much tension in the capsular bag. And then you uh, sweep on the left side up and down and you're injecting BSS while you're sweeping. You're doing mechanical and hydro dissection. Uh, and you're sweeping to free that anterior capsule of the lens material underneath it. And then you swivel to the right side and you perform the identical procedure. Again, you see, even though the cannula tip is long, it is at a right angle, it's smooth, it's got a rounded flat tip, and it's uh, very safe in the capsular fornix and for this manipulation. You're going to sweep up and down again using mechanical and hydrodissection to free up the anterior capsule from the underlying lens material. And as you do that, you can see the lens starts to spin very easily. With this approach, the epi epinucleus and endonucleus are freed but the capsule and the cortex remain. So remember, this is non-cortical cleaving hydrodissection. And I prefer non-cortical cleaving hydrodissection because I feel that you can get cleaner removal of lens epithelial cells. So this is in real time, the capsule, the, the cannula is placed out into the equator, into the capsular fornix, rotated down. You can see the dissection wave. You decompress the bag, and then you sweep to the left and to the right to free the lens. And you can see that happened very easily. And this technique, and the reason why I designed it is because it's an easy, one-step, highly reproducible technique. So you can see I rotated the cannula down and the wave occurred. As soon as that plunger is pushed, the BSS just flows posteriorly and the wave propagates with ease. There should not be any tension or resistance when you push that plunger because the wave wants to go posterior. The principle is that the water, the BSS, wants to follow the path of least resistance. And so since you're placing the cannula tip deep into the capsular fornix, it wants to go posterior. See, other cannulas are placed more shallow and near the anterior capsular opening. And because of that, the path of le least resistance can be anterior and fluid refluxes upward and fails to propagate posteriorly. With deep capsular fornix hydrodissection placement, you place that port down and towards the nerve, and that dissection wave freely flows 
on a consistent basis and you can see the tip is blunt so it's very safe to maneuver and, and the, the sweepings to the left and to the right is again is is simply to facilitate that lens rotation but really if you didn't want to do that you can just do the one step hydrodissection technique and then come out at this point but if you want to free the entry capsule you can go to the left and to the right and that freely mobilizes the lens and mobilizing the lens is good for most cataract surgery techniques but it also actually helps with cortical removal and removal of lens epithelial cells and this is a smaller pupil size even though you can't see the cannula tip you can still do the same maneuver with this again that deep capsular fornix positioning and placement of that uh, cannula tip is a critical part of this technique and why it's so successful and why it's different from any other hydrodissection technique out there. I believe this is a safe, efficient, and highly reproducible technique. Thank you for your attention.